Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Nahida post-release analysis. Let's go! Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking very much about Nahida and whether or not you should get her as part of her rerun that's coming very soon. And I'm going to split this into a few parts. We're first going to answer the damn question, and then we're going to have a look at the big butts, the big caveats as to when you probably don't necessarily need to use Nahida. I also wanted to spend some time and go through the videos that I have made before that sort of tangentially involve Nahida before her release and also directly involve Nahida, I guess, before her release. And then finally, I'll just give some final thoughts and some ideas as to how I feel about Nahida and why she is or why she is not as strong as you may think. Let's begin! Okay, should you get Nahida? Yes. My name is Karigari. Thanks for my TED talk. Let me know what to do with all of this in the comments below. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Genshin Impact action. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace. The Temple of Wisdom. Emerge. Oh. Right here. Oh. Emerge. Absorption test. Animal test. 6308. Let's play three a little memory. Okay, let me go a little bit further into this. Yes, I think you should get Nahida. It's Nahida. But if anything, I think the main takeaway that I want everyone to get from this video is that Nahida could do everything. We also have a lot of Dendro characters who can fulfill pretty much every single one of those roles. Let me explain what I mean by that. We're here with Nahida and Masanori. Alright, so here's the thing. We're going to start off with this team here, which I'm going to say is like an on-field spread damage Nahida. The team can also allow you to do a few other different things, but we're going to play on-field spread damage Nahida. We're going to use Sucrose, mainly to give Nahida some EM. Let me just refresh uh, Miko's uh, turrets. As you can see, Nahida is able to do a lot of damage. But here's the thing. We do have alternatives. Their names are Al Haytham and also Tengari. So if you were to try and do an on-field spread carry team, you can use Tignari as a sort of like burst type of way. And Al Haytham would work as more of a sustained kind of fashion. Of course, Ting Nani has his own strengths and weaknesses, and Al Haytham has his own strengths and weaknesses, but the main goal is to just demonstrate that you don't necessarily need Nahida if you want a very strong on-field spread hypercarry. Nahida also can satisfy another role called the off-field quicken application and also quicken hypercarry type dealio. We can use a very similar looking team, Except this time, I'm going to on-field with Lisa. Probably should have put Dory in there, but that's fine. Just gotta remember to swap over to Nahida every so often to refresh her special ability. Time to heal up with Dory. But as you can see here, Nahida is still able to do a lot of damage even off field thanks to the power of her skill. There is an alternative, not necessarily going to be hitting as hard, but you do have alternatives for that off field dendro application, particularly for Quicken. We have Yao Yao, we have DMC. We also have Kole. 
strictly for the purposes of maintaining Quicken, you actually do have Kole. If you're playing on-field, like, uh, Dendro, or on-field Electro, rather. You don't really need a super duper fast Dendro application. Kole is fast enough. Let's heal up with Dory. Maintain aggravate. Or oh, maintain quicken rather. You can maintain quicken with Dory. So for the oh, and also Collie rather. So for the purposes of maintaining quicken, you don't necessarily need Nahida, but Nahida is a wonderful choice nonetheless. So is DMC, so is Yao Yao. Now even though that is the case, Nahida will be the one who does the most off-field damage, I think. So, until there is a new Dendro character who comes out who is very specific in the off-field Dendro damage, Nahida should still be uniquely powerful for this particular role. There is, of course, a few other different kinds of teams that you can play with Nahida. For example, we have Nilu teams. And I have talked about Nilu teams at some great length as part of her video because she's also getting a rerun. But yeah, you can of course use Nahida with Nilu. There are alternatives. We have Al Haytham. And this big beefcake of a man can fit a similar role. Oh, come on. And you can do this too. So there we go. Essentially, with regards to Nilu teams, you have Al Haytham, you have Kole, you have DMC, hell, you have Yao Yao. Basically, you have every single Dendro character that exists and will exist in the future who can be suitable replacements for Nahida. So you don't necessarily need Nahida because you have so many other options. Now, moving on, we have another team that Nahida can be very, very good in, and that is, of course, a burning team. And as an Aloy main, we're talking about Burn Loy. All right, so. This is how Burn Loy works. I haven't done this in a while. Missile pack punch. Grow, grow, grow. The wind knows I'm going in. Share my knowledge. This is a new one. This may turn a little. The idea is that Nahida's off field dendro application, with C1 preferably, is fast enough to maintain the pyro aura on the enemy, allowing Aloy's normal attacks to reverse melt off them. There is a bit of an alternative. And her name is Yao Yao. But keep in mind, if you're going to use Yao Yao over Nahida for something like Burn Loy or other burning teams, you are going to lose that EM share as part of her ult. As part of Nahida's ult, anyway. Ever seen one 
of these? One with nature. Buckle up! The hunt is on! Missile pack a punch. The wind knows me. It works. But I will say, in this particular regard, obviously Nahida will be the stronger option. And that is the general theme for all of these teams. Nahida is generally speaking the stronger option, but you do have a lot of other options that you don't necessarily need to get Nahida for. All right, let's move on to another kind of team that we have, Virgin. All right, ignore my numbers because my Tomo is unleveled, it doesn't matter. So. So basically, we can use something like this. We can do something like that in order to make it work with Nahida. There is a couple of alternatives. You could potentially try and use someone like Yao Yao. You could try and make it work with DMC. Or you could give a crack with Al Haytham. And this is mainly for, of course, on-field virgin shenanigans. Yeah, with on-field virgin shenanigans, yeah, of course you can use our Haytham. Ah, I lost the shield. I don't claim to be a particularly good Tomo player. But you get the idea. The main premise is that for on-field Burgeon and also for on-field Hyper Bloom shenanigans, you do have an alternative in the form of Alhatham. In a similar fashion, you have a lot of alternatives for off-field Hyper Bloom and off-field Burgeon shenanigans. With a Seto team, for example, I tend to bring someone like uh, Nahida with me because that's often a good choice. I may have put the wrong weapon on Seno, so ignore Seno's damage. Or maybe I haven't. But as you can see, Nahida is able to provide that off-field electro application that I need for Seno to continue to pop off seeds and also get quickened back. The alternatives include DMC, possibly Kole, depending on who you're playing as your on-field electro driver. If you're playing with Seno, then you probably don't want to bring along Kole. Well, you could potentially use someone like yep. Yao Yao instead. Because she can also provide that off-field uh, uh, dendro that someone like Seno would like to have. And healing, which also helps. Let's go, Yugui, let's go! It's not gonna last as long as um, the heaters. So in a situation like this, kind of not ideal. But we're not talking about necessarily what's ideal. We're just talking about what options you have. You don't necessarily need to get Nahida. And you will end up with a result something like that. So you have DMC, you have Yao Yao, you possibly have Kole in that regard. Now, Thundering Furry, crap. Oh god. We have Thundering Furry. 
This is a team that you can actually use Nahida in. I have no idea how to play this. And ignore the numbers, my Razor is under-leveled and under-talented. Like, under-talented levels. I am hoping that I am playing this mostly correctly. This is looking like how it was demonstrated thanks to the chef. I am thinking this is what it's meant to look like. In typical fashion, now I have energy problems. The second half wasn't Thundering Furry at all, but you get the idea. You have Thundering Furry. There are alternatives to Nahida for Thundering Furry. In fact, when Thundering Furry was first released as an idea, it was done with DMC. So, in fact, for this particular team, you have the most free option available for you. I am hoping I'm doing it correctly. This is looking more like it. And etc. 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 You have Thundering Furry with the use of DMC instead of Nahida. So those are the teams, essentially what I'm trying to get at is every kind of team and every kind of playstyle you can play Nahida in, you have a whole lot of alternatives. There's also of course playing Medic Nahida, which you can fit into just about any one of those teams if you don't want to use a healer. Of course we do have Yao Yao and very soon we're also going to have Baiju as substitute healers of the Dendro variety as well. So even for Medic Nahida, you have some options. Quietly now, here comes the catch. Busted. To the wicked. Oh, uh, I never asked for redemption. All right, it's time for the actual post-release analysis part of the video, where I actually go through two videos that I did a while ago before the heaters release, where I kind of tried to talk about. Nahida in some detail. I want to see what I got wrong, what I got right, maybe things that we could also add on top of those videos. So let's begin. The first one is going to be the Nahida section of the Comprehensive Guide to Lisa Dendro Edition, where I did actually talk about Nahida in some detail. So let's begin. This is the second time I'm going to try and record this particular part of the video because the first time I think I went a little bit too long. Yeah, sometimes I, I take forever Nahida to record being videos. a very powerful character in both aggro and hyper bloom Lisa teams. Essentially, we're looking at consistent and regular application of Dendro via her special ability. And because Lisa is an electro character, should Nahida actually use her ultimate, it's actually going to increase the attack speed of her off field Dendro application, which should be really, really good. We'll see. So, yeah, that actually ended up being the case. Uh, and right now, because I have C1 Nahida, it's always the case anyway, but for anyone who doesn't have C1 Nahida, if you're running an Electro character, whether it be Lisa, Seno, Miko, etc., 100% the effect of your ultimate allows your special to hit even faster, which is just really, really good. There was a moment in the beta in 3.2 where having Nahida's uh, special hit faster didn't exactly do a whole lot in terms of trying to get more Dendro application out because it actually had an ICD. But these days, because it doesn't have an ICD, it is actually super duper meaningful to run at least one Electro character. You can go ahead and run two Electro characters anyway, because there are a lot of good teams with Nahida that actually run two Electro characters. And so then you have pretty much the maximum bonus on that particular uh, attack speed bonus, if you will. Especially when you have a bunch of Electro characters on your team, thus buffing the attack speed increase. Essentially, 
In fact, we could actually demonstrate that. So... This way to look right here, right now. Emerge. Stabilize. Grow, grow, grow. Ha, right now. Emerge. Committed to memory. Make yourself a move. Right here. Right now. Right here. And so you can kind of see there is a difference. I'm going to need to put a timer on because it's going to be hard for me to see it while I'm recording it. But yeah, there is a fact going to be a bit of a faster speed on that Dendro application. And that's of course going to be really, really helpful for a lot of teams that actually rely on that Dendro application. Will she make a huge difference to Lisa's experience with Dendro? Well, considering that she's essentially power creep Dendro MC, not exactly, but it's going to be a much better experience, in my opinion, than using Dendro MC. Yeah, generally speaking, I would actually run Nahida with Lisa over Dendro MC. If we run Dendro MC instead of Lisa, well, you'll still end up with a pretty similar experience. But, like, I haven't built my Dendro MC for damage. Come a little closer. But yeah, it, it still works You're pretty well. For a little shock. Come a little closer. Scatter. Like so. <laughs> so yeah, aside from the fact that I haven't actually built Dendro MC for damage, at least for like wicked shenanigans with Lisa, Dendro MC is absolutely perfectly fine. Where I think the Dendro application is really going to matter is when you're trying to play Hyper Bloom shenanigans. And also make sure you're not using py uh, Pyro with Dendro MC because you might accidentally cause the thing to explode, the lab to explode. Come a little closer. You're in for a little shock. Come a little And then of course there's also the duration reduction that comes with using Dendro MC. Her thing doesn't last, or his thing doesn't last nearly as long as Nahida's off-field Dendro application. Whereas if you use someone like Nahida. As you can see, the heaters thing lasts forever. You're in for a little shot. <laughs> so it's a little bit easier to use and actually play Hyper Bloom Shenanigans with the heater. So that's actually going to make a pretty big difference. On top of that, because she's a mage, she also has access to something like Prototype Amber, and so far, <laughs> as far as I can tell, she has a very cheap I've talked about Medic Nahida before. 50 energy cost, which basically means she can actually heal pretty well as well, which means we do in fact have, technically, a Dendro healer. I cover so this a lot more in my Medic Nahida video. Nahida teams, well, I can think of a few things right off the bat. For starters, let's go with an aggro Lisa team. I could definitely see something along the lines of Lisa, Nahida, and Tegnari, and then potentially Dory if Nahida's not being a healer, or Yaimiko if Nahida is going to be a healer. Okay, yeah, this is actually one of my favorite teams to play sometimes. I haven't actually used it in Spiral Abyss that much, but it is a very, very powerful team. So this is basically what that team could look like. <laughs> Take that is just really, really strong. There is of course an alternative to playing with Lisa, you can obviously use Miko. Miko potentially being a better option for Technari because Miko's turret being her special as opposed to Lisa's turret being her lantern being her ultimate does make her more conducive for Technari than Lisa. Alternatively, you can have Lisa and Nahida double teaming together to support someone like Seno because his particular ultimate takes quite a lot of field time. 
I haven't actually played a whole lot of Lisa Seno shenanigans, actually. I don't actually do this nearly as much. To me, I just feel like Seno is probably better off with someone like Beidou, but we can still demonstrate it. It could end up looking something like this. <laughs> Am I not running Thunder? Am I not running Thunder Fury? Ah! Anyway, it's a bit weird. I probably wouldn't recommend it anymore. Uh, I tend to run Beidou with Seto if I'm not running Nahida or if I'm not running Dory. I tend to run Beidou myself. And for Hyper Bloom Lisa, it could be something as simple as Lisa, Nahida, and Sucrose, and then either bringing Yilan if Nahida is healing, or Kukumi if Nahida is not healing. One thing I may have forgotten to take into account with this particular team is that Nahida's ult will give a whole lot of EM, so you could potentially just bring someone else like a healer or a battery like Dory if you want to play Hyper Bloom Lisa. Or you could just go even further and actually run someone like Sucrose to give you even more EM if you want. Like, you have options. Uh, it's entirely up to you, especially if you're going to run Kokomi as your off-field Hydro as opposed to someone like Yolan that I did earlier. But yeah, definitely something to keep in mind is that you're going to get a lot of EM as well from Nahida. But when it comes to playing Hyper Bloom, there's no really, there's not really anything called too much EM. If you want to play on-field Lisa with Nahida, then there's another weapon that I think I could actually recommend pretty highly, and that is Hakushin Ring. Not only does Hakushin Ring provide you with an energy regeneration substat, but when you trigger a reaction whilst Nahida has her off-field Dendra application, in theory and hopefully in practice, both you and Nahida, as well as any other Electro and Dendra characters in your team, will be getting a damage bonus, which of course is going to be very important if you're trying to play Aggravate Spread Lisa Nahida shenanigans. Okay, let's find out if that's real. Okay, so we have Lisa here with the Hakushin Ring, R5 at the moment. After the character equipped with this weapon triggers an Electro reaction, nearby party members of the elemental type involved with the elemental reaction receive 20% of their elemental damage bonus for their element. So, if we look at the stats page of Lisa, she currently has 61.6% electro damage bonus. And Nahida, while she does have a lot of EM, that doesn't necessarily translate to dendro damage bonus on her stats because it's only for her special ability. So it's only going to be showing 15% dendro damage bonus at the present moment. Let's do this. <laughs> so here's an Electro Aura on the Terrace Room. Now it's quickened. But if we look at the stats of Nahida, sorry Nahida, 15% still. 61% still. So that's not helpful. But if I were to now do an Aggravate, 81.6. Thirty-five percent. In other words, it doesn't have to be specifically quickened. It can be aggravate. Um, it can be aggravate. Whoops. Yes, this is still maintaining that aura. It will only last for 6 seconds, so very soon this 35% Dedra damage bonus should disappear. But the main takeaway is that Hakushin Ring on Lisa is 100% a fantastic option if you want to play on-field Lisa and you need that energy recharge, then yeah, on-field aggravate Lisa with Hakushin Ring is a wonderful choice for both you and Nahida. But we'll see what happens when Nahida comes out. Thanks for- Okay, yeah, Nahida's fantastic with Lisa, 100%. Okay, the next video we're going to look at is a much more generalist Nahida video. This one's called Nahida Teams to Keep an Eye On. 
All right, Nahida is incoming and I'm skipping the intro. Another team that I'm actually very excited to try out and see what kind of shenanigans I can get up to is of course going to be the Nilu team. Now, unlike some people, I really, really like Nilu. I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever in getting Nilu. I still have no regrets in getting Nilu. She is fantastic and awesome. I've already talked about Nilu teams too exhausted, I think, but for the sake of this video, let's try out a Nilu team. This is my favorite Nilu team right now. <laughs> Give me that EM share. But yeah, my favorite Nilu team. Why? Because I get to play Candace. I haven't really found another way to play Candace that I like. But I really, really like playing Candace and Nilu team. So that's where I'm at right now with Nilu teams. And of course, it does feature Nahida pretty prominently. Otherwise, I'd probably have to swap out Candace for someone like Flop Shing Chu so that I can play our Haythan, for example. Her off your dendro application, unlike DMC, is relying solely on her skill, not her ult. So as you can see there, just then I was having some energy problems with DMC, which kind of pisses me off. So that is what makes Nahida so much more excited to play. And in a similar fashion, that is like probably the biggest strength of Nahida, is that her off your dendro application is based on her special and not her ult. So that means it's just forever always there. And the fact that it does have up way more than 100% uptime, provided you're not going up against like really squishy multi-wave shenanigans. So for example, that Nilu demonstration just then, not exactly the best place to be using Nahida. You actually kind of will do better with someone like DMC at that point. But aside from multi-wave shenanigans, oh, Nahida's off your dendro application is fantastic. A Seno team. So the thing about Seno is that I like his gameplay, but I haven't actually used them nearly as much as I have like Nilu, Tignari, obviously. Um, that still remains to be the case. I don't play Seno nearly enough. Right now, I feel like the best way to play Seno is a Quick Bloom team. That basically means that you want to use a Hydro application like Yelan as opposed to someone like Shinchu, because then you can maintain Quick Bloom while still getting a couple of blooms out, hence the name Quick Bloom. So then it kind of looks like this. Well, actually, not kind of. It actually looks like this. I would use Dory's ult so I can stay alive, but whatever. Seto was a lot of fun, but I just don't use him nearly enough to justify ever getting him. Like, <laughs> I also don't use Eula that much, but the, the, the main thing is that, like, yeah, Seto is really, really fun, especially with Nahida. Nahida is a wonderful person to use with Seno, so yeah, you do have a great time if you decide to use those two characters together. My issue with Seno is not anything to do with damage, meta memes, or all that jazz, no. It is merely just the fact that, like, Right now, I do have to rely on DMC for the off-field dendro application, and that means relying on an alt. That's really the only issue that he had before Nahida came out. Once you have Nahida, it's a lot easier to play Seno. Frankly, once you have Nahida, it's a lot easier to play everyone. That's just, I think that's the main takeaway with regards to like DMC versus Nahida. It's just so much easier to play Nahida. That's just it. So moving a little bit further away from that kind of stuff now, there's some other teams that I'm actually quite excited to try out. For example, we have a potential Nahida Pokemon trainer team. It's essentially Sukokumon, but instead of using Sucrose, we'll be using Nahida. Obviously, I don't have Nahida, so I can't really demonstrate it properly. But hopefully with Tignati's burst, this should be an idea of how, to, how this would work. 
I've actually never tried this team. Let's have, let's give it a shot. Here we go. Let's go, Nahida. Might as well chuck in that as well. That's actually not too bad. Let's wait for our cooldowns to return. That's actually not too bad. <laughs> Maybe something to try. Sunahidamon. Final thoughts for anyone who is still looking to try and figure out whether or not they want to get Nahida. I wanted to make this quick because last time I recorded this, it ended up being about seven minutes long. So let's not do that. Essentially, when it comes to getting Nahida, I think in the end, you should really look at whether or not you like Nahida as well as whether or not you have a lot of teams that you would actually like to use Nahida. Generally speaking, you will eventually find yourself in a position where they will have a lot of teams that like Nahida to be on their team. And also keep in mind, if you're a newer player, you might not want to get Nahida right now because you will actually need to unlock certain weekly bosses or rather a certain weekly boss in Sumeru before you can even start to level up Nahida's talents, for example. And you're also going to need a bunch of resources because obviously Nahida being a character from Sumeru is going to need some things from that sort of currently later game period so you might want to keep that in mind as well aside from that though i guess the only other things i wanted to briefly touch on are nahida's constellations i'm going to be the first and potentially only person you'll ever hear say this i think nahida c1 is extremely underappreciated mainly because there are actually a lot of teams that can make use of c1 because they don't have for example an electric character on their team so for example teams like Nilu teams generally don't have an electric character. Burn Loy and by extension Burn Milk Ganyu, these teams don't necessarily have an electric character. So having that extra electro sort of effect on Nahida's ult so that you can have that faster Dedra application, I think is in fact really, really powerful. And then of course you have teams that don't necessarily have a Hydra character, for example Quicken teams that can also appreciate the extended duration of Nahida's ult, thus the extended duration of the EM share, and that is actually really, really good for those kinds of teams. Aside from that, all of her other constellations are really, really strong, well, possibly not C4, but either way, all of her constellations outside of C2, past C2 are basically flexing purposes, C2 being its own power spike in and of itself. Meanwhile, thousands of miles away when it comes to the way to build Nahida. I personally have chosen to stick with 4-piece deep wood just so that it's a much more generalist way of playing Nahida because I do end up using Nahida in a whole lot of teams and you know a lot of those teams being Virgin, Hyper Blue, Nilu teams they do end up needing someone who runs deep wood and so Nahida being sort of like the common factor if you will for a lot of those teams I find that deep wood is just really, really good and then even then for like the spread aggravate teams having someone with deep wood is really, really good so Nahida once again being a bit of a common factor in that particular regard I will just stick deep wood on her it also helps that right now my deep wood set with Nahida is really really strong for Nahida as if it's almost tailor-made for Nahida especially since lately I also managed to get myself a 100 EM feather so that's pretty dope so yeah in terms of the artifacts that I'm gonna stick with Deepwood you can use Guild of Dreams if you want if you happen to have a set for her like that but that keep in mind all of her teams someone's probably gonna to want to be using Deepwood in some way shape or form in terms of the weapon to use for Nahida I personally have just stuck with Kagura's Verity because I feel like it's just more or less the best DPS weapon for her. You can use R5 Witsith if you want. It is actually a very, very strong weapon in the sense that for about 10 seconds every 30 seconds, it does end up being the strongest DPS weapon for Nahida. You could alternatively use Magic Guide, Sack Rags, or Thousand Floating Dreams. Thousand Floating Dreams, of course, being her signature weapon, which basically means it's probably her best generalist weapon. Sack Rags is 
good, although I personally don't bother with it because, well, I have Kagura's. Uh, and also Magic Guide is an option, but out of principle, I refuse to put a 3-star weapon on a 5-star character, especially an Archon. So, yeah, that's kind of pretty much it. Let me know if you think about all of this in the comments below. How are you playing Nahida? Let me know in the comments. Are you going for Nahida's Constellations? Are you going for Nahida's Rerun? Let me know in the comments. Is this the kind of video that you would like to see a lot more of? This kind of long form, way too many sections video? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more. Again, today, back action and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.